Dustin students. We will be continuing with the discussion of our poem, that is the tiger in the zoo. If you remember, in the last session, we discussed the rights, feelings, and freedom of the tiger. A tiger is put behind a cage and he has become a showpiece. The spectators who visit the zoo try to look at him, but he, out of his hatred for human beings, turns away. He ignores the visitors. So, the poet was discussing the freedom of the tiger in the jungle and he was giving an example. The tiger was supposed to hide or it is supposed to hide near a water brook. It is supposed to hide itself amidst the tall long grass and he waits for a prey, a fat, plump, healthy deer to pass by. But instead of roaming freely in the jungle, the tiger is seen walking pitiably, pathetically inside a small cage and he is stuffed into that. Today, we will discuss the last three stanzas of the poem and the third stanza fits as such. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge. So who does the word he refer to? Obviously the tiger. So in the last class, I discussed the literary device involved in this poem. The poet addresses the tiger as he. So he uh, considers the tiger as a human being who has life. And therefore, the literary device that has been applied in this is personification. What does the tiger do? What is he supposed to do? He is supposed to be snarling around the houses. What is the meaning of snarling? Snarling means making a strong voice, a strong call or growling you can say. Snarling, making a terrific sound. So the tiger is supposed to be snarling around houses. Now why does the poet use the word houses? You see sometimes the tiger runs out of prey in the jungle. He is unable to find any predators. In the sense, he is unable to find any game or any kind of prey in the jungle. Therefore, what happens? He slowly walks and walks and walks and he reaches the boundary of the jungle where he finds a small village. So, at the edge of the jungle, he finds a village and there are houses in the village and therefore the tiger moves along the border of the jungle. He moves into the village sometimes and he makes a terrific, frightful sound, a snarling sound. By using this word, the poet brings up the tiger's identity. What is the identity of the tiger? The identity, for identity of the tiger lies in its moving boldly, his majestic walk. His roar, his snarling, all these characters belong to the tiger only. And therefore, they become his identity. Snarling, roaring, howling, all these noises, which are very frightening, belongs to the tiger. And the walk of the tiger, that is again a majestic walk, these are the identities of the tiger. And instead of living with his identity, such an identity in the forest, the tiger is taken and put behind the bars of a cage. He is in captivity. So see what a great harm man does to the tiger. His freedom is taken away. His identity is taken away. His prestige, his honor, they are all taken away from him and he is put into a small cage where he is made to move around and people look at him. So he becomes a showpiece. That is what the poet says. Don't make the tiger a showpiece. His identity should be preserved and his habitat should be preserved and he should be given the choice to live in the jungle in whatever way he likes. But human beings, for their selfish gains, for their personal interests, they catch these animals and put them in captivity, which should not be done at any cost. So, the rights of the animals, again, yeah, the rights of the animals, 
animals are to be protected by all means. If animals are not there, this world would be incomplete. And if animals are not there in the jungle, the life in the jungle would be upset. The food chain in the jungle would be upset. And everything would become topsy-turvy. And when nature is upset, we are affected. So animals are part of our lives. And they should be given the freedom to live in their own habitat, live a natural life. So, at the jungle's edge, baring his white teeth, terrorizing the village. White teeth, again, the white teeth possessed by the tiger, they are very sharp. They can tear the meat in a fraction of a second. And they give strength and identity to the tiger. So what does the tiger do? He comes near the border of the jungle and he goes around the houses showing his white strong teeth or strong white teeth which become his identity. Barbaring his white teeth. Bearing means showing his white teeth terrorizing the village. So the tiger terrorizes the village but he does not kill any people unless an animal is provoked. We discussed this yesterday. No wild animal will go forward to attack somebody without any reason or without any cause. If you disturb the animals, obviously they will try to kind of protect themselves and they will retaliate. What is the meaning of retaliating? They will try to defend themselves. Because God has given them the defense mechanism. But if I don't touch them, they don't touch me. They don't disturb me. So the tiger just terrorizes the village. And its intention is not to go about killing. Its intention is not to go about, go on a killing spree. No. Well, when the tiger feels hungry and if something comes on its way, definitely it will try to attack and eat. So, instead of tiger, the tiger having its identity in the jungle, he is put in a small concrete cell. The next stanza, but he is locked in a concrete cell. Now you see the poet is shifting from the natural environment or the natural habitat of the tiger into the present condition, that is condition in the zoo. So he's shifting. He speaks about the freedom of tiger in the jungle and at the same time he comes back to remind what the tiger's condition is right now. So you see, but he is locked in a concrete cell. Who is locked in a concrete cell? The tiger is locked in a concrete cell. What is the meaning of concrete cell? A small room made of cement. And iron bars are preventing him from getting out and enjoying the freedom. So it is a pathetic condition. The condition of the tiger is really pathetic. He is locked in a concrete cell. His strength of his cage. What is the strength that the poet has understood? The body of the tiger. So the poet says that the body of the tiger which signifies strength which is a synonym of strength is locked in a concrete cell. A great majestic bold animal is unfortunately put behind the bars and is not even able to move freely. His freedom is curtailed. He is barred from going out into the jungle. His strength of his cage. His strength now lies in the cage. His body now lies in the cage. And ignoring visitors. This is a very, very important line. Ignoring the visitors. Who are the visitors? The visitors are those people, the spectators who come to watch the tiger. But you know how the tiger behaves with them? He does not look at them. He does not smile at them. He does not even growl at them. Instead, he just moves out. He is passive. He does not react. He does not respond to the people who come to see him. This shows that the tiger has developed a hatred for human beings. He has developed a hatred. Why is this hatred? The hatred is because of the selfishness of mankind. Man has become selfish. 
And because of his selfishness, a tiger suffers. And the tiger hates mankind. Tiger hates the human race for their selfishness, for their greed, and for intimidating or dominating or suppressing the freedom of the tiger. So this is an environmental issue. When you read this poem, you must always keep the environmental issue at the back of your mind. If you read this poem with that issue at the back of your mind, it will be easy for you to understand this poem and you will know what the poet is trying to talk about. So the, this stanza, this particular stanza talks about the tiger's identity, its freedom and the strength of the tiger is also exhibited. And the next stanza speaks about the pitiable condition of the tiger and the suffering that is going through the cage. We will continue with another stanza. So finally we are at the last stanza of the poem and in this poem the poet sums up the entire theme, the entire theme. Now look at this, he hears the last voice at night. Who is he? Once again, it is the tiger and remember, whenever you find the word he in this poem, remember the tiger is personified, he is treated as a human being and he hears the last voice. What does the poet mean by the last voice? It is the voice of the zookeepers, the wardens, the guards, the patrolling officials who come to have a final checkup. Normally before they close the zoo, they see that every animal is safe in its cage, it is properly fed and it is in the right condition. So when the patrolling car comes at night, he listens to the voice of the patrolling cars. That is the last voice he hears for the day, the patrolling cars and stares with brilliant eyes. This word brilliant eyes has to be taken note of or you have to pay attention to that. What does the poem mean? By the word brilliant eyes and stares with brilliant eyes. Who stares? The tiger stares. What is the meaning of the word stare? Look intently, having a very keen look and the tiger is having a keen look and what is he looking at? He is looking at the brilliant stars. Obviously, the stars are there above in the sky and the tiger is looking up at the stars. You see, the poet has used the word brilliant twice. It is a repetition. The literary device used in these two lines is repetition. What is repetition? When one word is used again and again, that becomes a repetition. But what is the need of this repetition? What is the need of this word brilliant here? Brilliant eyes. Who has brilliant eyes? Obviously the tiger has brilliant eyes. And what is the speciality of the brilliant eyes of the tiger? The tiger has a very keen sense of sight. It has a powerful night vision. And in fact, the power of the tiger's eyes are six times more than that of the human eyes. So it can see any object, even whether it is at a distance of one kilometer, the tiger has the power to look at it keenly. So he has brilliant eyes, but his brilliant eyes are not looking at any wild animal in the jungle. Instead, his brilliant eyes are looking at the brilliant stars. What do I mean? What, do the, what does the poet mean by this phrase, brilliant stars? The stars are obviously shining and the powerful eyes of the tiger are looking at the shining stars because the stars are free. They can also mean it this way. The stars are shining freely in the sky, in the heavens. And the tiger is looking at those stars and he's yearning for the freedom. He understands now that he is in a cage, he cannot move out of the cage, his freedom is curtailed. Therefore, instead of looking at the patrolling cars, instead of looking at the people, he is looking up at the stars and he desires for the freedom. So ultimately, it is the lost freedom that the tiger seeks. So the poet concludes.
holds the poem with his powerful note, that is, respect the freedom of the animals because they do have rights and they do have feelings. So, I hope you must have got a clear picture of this poem now. I only wish that you open your books. I will also be sending you the entire poem, the entire text. Go through the text and we will also be given some questions for which you have got to write the answers and definitely I will be checking them very soon. Till then, stay safe at home and goodbye.